welcome back to City TV. My name is Tracy and this is my client Kirsten. And today we're going to give her a fun makeover. Kirsten has lovely blonde dimensional hair. She has a variation of tones, but today what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little shine boost. So we're going to use the Alterna Caviar 3 minute shine boost before we get started to bring out that natural dimension. Kirsten has been growing out a short haircut. We've gotten to a good length to play with, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the length just a little bit to add a little bit more body, a little bit more fullness. We're going to exchange up her part. This is more for open side. This way she'll get a little bit more body on top. By switching your part, you'll get a little bit more body in your haircut. We're also going to break it up a little bit, lighten it up so it's a little bit more airy, it's a little bit more movement to it. Bring in some layers through here and through the back and give a nice swing so it's a fun, sexy haircut. Add a little bit of fringe, a little bit of fringe over here just to break it up around her face. We just finished Kirsten shampoo as well as her three minute shine boost treatment. This is also a treatment that you can do at home in between your insulin services to add shine to your color. Kirsten's layers with a point cutting technique just so we have a nice fluid movement and no heavy weight lines. We are finished with the haircut and now we're going to send her over to Rax for makeup. What happens with everybody, not just you, but everybody, we all get blue, violet, and red in the center of our faces. That's the most important thing. You want to compress your features, which means bring your eyes forward and make the nose move back, and that's what makes everyone look more youthful, but it doesn't change the way you look. It just says, oh, high school, love it. So without making you look bizarre and different, the quickest way to do it is I'm gonna have you stick your pinky in something here I have called Sweet Dream and take the violet out of your mouth, put it right on your lips and watch the purple and the red in your face go away. It'll just make you, and do the tops as well, there you go. It's the purple that's the enemy. So now you're less red in the face. Can you see how the eyes got bluer? Let's do it one more time. This is a tinted lip primer. And so, uh, because everybody, their lips turn more blue as the days and the hours go by. Can you see that it already looks like I put foundation on you? Because mm -hmm. it cleared up the blue, the violet, and, and it separates the eyes. That's the most important thing. We're gonna come back and do that a couple more times with real lipsticks and real other colors. But um, I wanted to show you that the first thing you wanna do is neutralize your lips. So the object of the game again is to get all this purple shadow, all that shadow in there, and the red, and the nasolabial fold, and all the red gone. So I'm using something that is it's called lip and eye primer, and it's going to be just like your cover-up. It's going to be much whiter than you think it is, and look down for me. I'll never ask you to close, I'll just always ask you to look down, but now I'm going to erase the redness from the, on the nose, just from the sunglasses, and then I will look at you and blend this out, but this is basically the key component that makes every woman look like they're tired. To get a little line, I take it off, it makes the eye go up, the eye's no longer going down. I am going to look at you and blend it out, and I have to take it all the way across your lid. That's really important. But we're going to take a little bit of a nasal labial, and this little corner right here, and that little corner right there will make you smile, and this in that area. Just kind of spot check it all, and I'm going to move it around. A little bit of red right here, 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 just kind of take it like that. And then I'm going to take my brush end of this, of this dual-ended brush, one's to apply, one's to blend it out. And all I'm really trying to do is just compress your features and then look down for me. And then you'll see what will happen is all of a sudden you're just going to look like a more beautiful, youthful you without distorting you and making you look, can you a tiny bit, look up for me, without making you look like somebody else. And then down one more time. And there you go. And do it here right there. And look down to me, there you go. And look up for me. So that's going to be your cover up and concealer. And you can see that I took all the downward lines, downward lines, downward lines away. I'm making everything go up. 
And, and so that's the concept. I'm going to repeat it for you one more time. So always take this out. Bink, can you see that's important? We're all most, most of us are most dark here. Shadow on the nose. And I'm going to take it up into that section where that shadow was right there. I'm going to redip on my little pot here. And then look down for me. There you go. Take it in there and don't forget to take it all the way across the lid because that's where a lot of the violet and purple still are is on the lid. And look straight ahead for me. There it is. If it doesn't look like it's too much, then it won't work. If it looks natural, then it's not gonna it's not gonna compress your features. Um, and that's what we need to do. Other people, you know, young girls can of course look up for me, have it real natural. But you know, if you're not 16, um, you want to start compressing your features because it makes you look more beautiful. And that's all there is to it. And then I take my brush, flip it around, and now this is going to just blend it out. It will be too light. It's too light on purpose. And look down for me. But you can see that now it's compressed your features, and now it's about your beauty and your bones, and not about the shadows and the downward planes and lines in the face. And again, you're a little tiny bit narrow here, so I want to fill you out there. That compresses your feature. And that's the cover-up. That's basically all that I've done, okay? Mm -hmm. And so then, at this point, I have a lot more options depending on what your day's like, what you're really going to do with your day. So I know you're in real estate, so tell me, would you wear a foundation? Would you put on a powder? What would you do? Come down from there. Um, I always put on... Just like a light SPF with a little tint. Oh, a moisture tint with an SPF. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's just great. And uh, try, and what is the SPF on it, sweetie? 15. Yeah, 15, darling. It's really for the bottom of your feet or under your arms. So you have to go to like a 45. Remember how your nose was red? Mm -hmm. If you wear sunglasses, you're going to get 90% more UV radiation damaging your nose. So you really have at least a 45. Try the dry touch by Neutrogena, something that's going to give you kind of a matte finish so it doesn't get greasy. So, because you have this beautiful dome and so everything gets kind of shiny on its own. So that's basically, you're not getting enough, you're not getting enough uh, sun. You're wearing a sunscreen and you need a sunblock. A sunscreen is a screen door, a sunblock is a solid door. If you want to block, smile for me. Notice you're only red right here. That's mm -hmm. because that's where the sun's getting you all the time. You're red right here. That's because that's where the sun's getting you all the time. And you're red right here. That's because the sun's getting you there all the time. You have to block those areas. And some of the other areas could be screened, but uh, it's best to add it cosmetically than it is to add it uh, to let the sun peek through and damage it. I'm now going to put on a cover-up. Uh, concealer foundation all-in-one and you're, you said you were using a a, um, a moisture tint mm -hmm. so uh, if you were to wear a foundation a cover-up or concealer and I realize that this is a beauty mark here and we're going to uncover that later but for right now we're just going to block it out all anything that has titanium dioxide or zinc oxide that's what powder sunscreens are made out of it's going to also protect your skin from the environment. Notice I'm only making you up in the center of your face. I'm not going on the side of your face because if I do, your face will get flat. I see how it's brown and beautiful and contoured and then goes into light. Mm -hmm. So I'm really only going to make the center of your face light. Everything else is going to be this warm skin tone. It's going to bridge down your neck and go into your decollete. So I will not be putting makeup on the outside of your face. That's why I need you to put on a sunblock that's really going to block it for you. So, all I want is the red to go away. I'll add warmth back later, but I need the redness to disappear. If you have redness in this part of your face, it adds weight and volume. And even though every person that ever makes you up and every book that's ever been printed says put it on the apples of your cheek, it will add weight and volume to your face. And most people are not looking to get a lot of weight and redness added to their face. You can see this makes you look more sculpted. I've taken and lifted the face because I took that red out of there. So that's the important part. Get the red out of the center of the face. And again, in your particular case, this is your heart shape right here. It's wide because I want your temple to be light. You stay in this area. That's the heart shape. This temple again, and then we're going to come down to here. However, I need that frontal bone there dark, and that frontal bone there dark. There are a lot of ways to do that. You can do it with a bronzer, a darker foundation. You can do it with a contour. You can do it with um, eyeshadows. 
but I'll come back later and I'll move that bone back because the more I move that bone back, the more the eye comes forward. Most other people will tell you to make this bone light and when you do, it brings it forward and then the eye sinks back. I want the bone to go back and the eye to come forward. So, that's all I've done on you is a little foundational cover up and now I'm going to just warm you up with a little bronzing, sun, sun colored, fun little blushy, bronzy complexion enhancer. It's not much, but I'm just going to use a real big brush. I'm just going to sweep you because I like you to have a sun-kissed look. And I'm doing it on the outside where I did not have foundation. See how I'm warming you up? Mm -hmm. I'm doing it on the outside. And then I'm going to have you lift your neck. And I want to see how you're kind of cool and white under here. Mm -hmm. We want that to be warmed up. And then I'm going to do it on your decollete, so it's going to look like you have this endless, gorgeous, seamless tan. And now this time, I do not dip my brush back into it. Close your eye for me. This is called residual. I'm doing just the residual to of the face. Look straight ahead. You can see how it warms you up and how you're not warmed up. Yeah. So now it looks like you have, you're bright and your face has been compressed, but I didn't put any more makeup on it. But now I have to put makeup on it because I don't have any more residuals on the side. So I do a little bit of this, and then I go back under here again where I know everybody needs it, and then close for me, I'll use the residual in the center of the face. And there you go, keep your eyes closed. And now, and pull your lips in for me. I swallow them up. There you go, and now I'm gonna go under there. And now you should look bright, three-dimensional, and your face should just be really nice and smooth. And now you see blue eyes. When I get rid of the violet, the purple and blue in your complexion, your eyes will get more blue. So now we're just seeing blue eyes, and that bone's gonna be moved back. I'm going to take a smaller brush and really go after that bone and move it back. Raise your brow for me. There you go. Right there. The more I move that bone back, the more it makes the eye come forward. See this bone is protruding? Mm -hmm. If I do two light coats on it, it will move it back even further. And so it's like an eyeshadow, but now that bone is not there. I've erased it, and this bone is still there. We don't want that bone. No matter what they tell you, don't buy into it. You want that bone to go away. See how I erased it? Mm -hmm. And now we see the beautiful shape of the eye, which I am going to bring out eventually. The next thing I want to do is I have a really dreamy product called Oil Control, and I'm going to take the Oil Control, and I'm going to minimize the shine here in the T-zone. It is a product that is just a nice, clear, light, color. It is not tinted. It's just the actual ingredient that makes all mattifying powders matte. That's all there is to it. So, and now I don't mind a little bit of an ingenue glow, but I do want you to be matte. And now what do you think? It's, my face is so clear, Rex. It's, it's like I'm 10 years younger. <laughs> Oh, I love that, sweetie. So now you're in your teens. I love that. But if you see, the complexion goes all the way down into the neck. You always want your decollete and your neck and the outside of the face and your forehead and these frontal bones to be warm and leave yourself light. Now, I can still see there's some coolness left here. When I'm done, I won't have that. I don't want that. I want you to look like you're naturally just not made up. But the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put on some mascara. Chip it up for me. And what I do, I get to the base of the mascara of the lash, and that's going to create an eyeliner effect. So I'm actually wiggling it back and forth. It feels like I'm going to almost go into your eye, but I'm not. And you want to spread your lashes like a peacock's tail, excuse my hand. And you want to go in every single direction, meaning as wide as you can get it. Pull it out to the side here, get it in there, and then I'm going to come back with a second coat of mascara, that's British mascara, a little bit later on. But you can see that that gives you an eyeliner effect and I don't have an eyeliner on you. Because I didn't use black or black brown, the eye stayed open. Later on, I'm actually going to use a finishing mascara, a green, which is going to make this look even bigger and softer. But that's what you should use. You should not use brown or black because there's nothing brown or black about your coloring. Turn toward me this way a little tiny bit and then I'll go ahead and look down for me. And again, I'm putting it at the base of the lash. That's going to give you the illusion of an eyelash. I do work it out to the end and spreading it in. And the reason I like to do this is for the exact thing that just happened. I got some mascara on your lid, so that's why I do my mascara now, not at the very end, because this allows me the opportunity to go back in there and wipe it off your lid because I don't have any eye makeup on your lid. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it happens all the time to everybody. So I'll take a little Q-tip before it dries, look down for me. This is a waterproof mascara, which I, uh, I prefer. 
Um, some girls like to go back and curl their lashes a second time. With the waterproof mascara, you can. If mascara, some stay creamy and moist and pasty. They will build up on your eyelash curler and your lashes stick to it and you'll pull, they'll pull your lashes out. So that's why I go for a waterproof. But anyway.